Hi, welcome to a quick overview of Submotion Advanced Toolkit Blender add-on. Let's start with installation. It's a usual zip installation type. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, expand the drop-down, Install from Disk, and select the file you've downloaded. Once it's there, you will see it enabled. Now we can close that, and the add-on will appear in your end panel under SMA Toolkit. If you ever get lost or confused about what the tool does, you can always click on the info button and it will display all the tools and what they do. All right, let's select an object we want to animate. Click on make collection. So once that's done, you will see your object renamed. Now let's start animating it. But first I'm gonna go and unwrap the object and I want every next object to be unwrapped as well. So I'm gonna click out and wrap collection live with a complex option. Now I'm also gonna scroll down to Sculpt Helper and add Sculpt Collisions. In Sculpt Collisions, I will add the plane that has already been put in a collision collection. Now once that's done, I'm gonna move my ball down and adjust the settings. You'll find the collision settings in the modifier panel. All right, let's move on to the next frame. I'm gonna click Copy Object. Also, I'm gonna press Shift W to enable onion skinning. You have all your onion skinning options in the onion skinning panel. But for now, I will hide it. I'm gonna move the bow up just a little bit. Copy the object and move it up again. You can also continue with duplicating the object instead of clicking on copy object, even though they work differently in some cases. I wanna see what the animation looks like so far. I can click on preview in the animation tool sub panel. And I'm gonna set steps to one and playback type as ping pong and hit play. All right, I'm pretty happy with it so far. So I'm gonna continue working on animation and disable the preview for now. All right, let's preview it again. Now let's move on to texture painting. In your contextual tools, you will see texture tools, new paint. For that, you will need to open an image editor. If you don't, it will let you know that you need to. First, before I create new paint, I'm going to set my base color and I'll keep my resolution pretty low. Now I can click new paint. You will see a new tile appear and you'll be in texture paint mode. Now I can start painting. All right, let's move a few frames up. On this frame, I want the expression to change. So I'm going to click new paint. I'll select the next one and also click new paint. What's also useful, you can set switch to textured and increase the opacity of your current object. So you can see the previous texture. Click new paint. You can track your paints in the image editor. Now it's also important to mention that if your UVs match between the objects, you can always select a different paint from the drop down in paint. So in this case, we're using paint 4, which is tile 1004, but we can also select, let's say paint 2. All right, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to click Shift W to disable onion skinning, and I'm going to click create animation. A new object will appear. Now I'm in material preview mode. I'm going to set the steps of the animation object to 1 and play probability 0.5. I'll also set it to ping pong. So these are the basics of creating an animation using Step Motion Advanced Toolkit. Now let's talk about blending. This could help you create modular characters with modular body or face features that are animated and can also be reused. Now, how do you use it? Once you have your animation object in modifier panel, at the bottom you will see blending. Now click on blend and choose the object you want to blend to. Once you do that, your texture will disappear for now. You can set the amount of blending and how much the object stretches. And you can also adjust the normal positions. Now, once you're happy with that, you will see a new panel appear in contextual tools called blending tools. Now I have an option to select the target material and target is a material of your animated object. You can also fix seams in case your object is on top of the source object seems, but we'll skip that for now. 
If I click on Setup Blending now, it will tell you that no shader editor is open. So you can open it, and now you can click on Setup Blending. But before we do that, let's move on to Material Preview. I will also select both Tiled Material, our animated material, as our target material, and click on Setup Blending. Once the shaders are compiled, you will see this. Now in your shader editor, you can adjust the mask with noise and gradient positions. It also works with animation. I'm gonna reset the children so the ball stays in one place. Also move your object freely and the mask will stay. You can also disable shadows if they cause any issues. But let's try to create a simulation. I'm gonna select one of the objects in the list and I'm gonna click create simulation. Once I play it, you will see that the balls fall. But we can also set so it plays on head only. And we will set the same collision collection for the head. I'm gonna decrease the density, restart the simulation and play it again. Now you can see the balls are jumping up once they hit. You can also click on delete on animation end. As well as freeze on last frame. And of course, you can also change the stepped interpolation for simulation and animation objects. You can also set the type to ping pong. Now let's change the velocity settings and set the turbulence amount to high. Use mostly turbulence, not Brownian, which is an individual individual instance turbulence. Set it to play once and increase the density. I like to reset the children so they don't get transposed in space. For such things as insect swarms, you can use up Z factor that will make sure that the instances are pointing up. You can also add bobble and displacement. So those are the basics of simulation. All right, let's quickly go over conversion tools. Now that you don't have your collection object selected or your animation or simulation object, you will see a new panel called Convert Existing Animation. Now here I have a very simple class simulation that ends at frame 50. If I just want it to be played with stepped values, like in step motion, I can click on play stepped. It will tell you that step modifier is added and here you can adjust the number of steps. And let's play the animation. If you want more complex tools for stepped animation, you can convert any type of animation or simulation to meshes to its new collection. So here you have start and end and interpolation steps. In most cases you want steps to be at the one unless your object is very high density or animation is really long. So I'm going to set start at one and end at 50. Also make sure that your simulation is baked. Now I'm going to click convert. This might take a while depending on your simulation or animation type or density of your meshes. We have converted our simulation to objects. Now I can do whatever I want with it, just like with the regular collections. I can sculpt, but I also can create animation and play it. Let's set it to one and let's do a ping pong. I can also always create a simulation. We'll set it to ping pong, velocity to zero. Increase the turbulence and set it lower. We'll keep the OBSI factor up. And we'll play it once. I'm gonna reset the simulation and I'll increase the play probability. Now, as you can tell, we'll have flying class animations. Now let's quickly look at Reference Toolkit, one of my favorite additions to the add-on. In Reference Toolkit, you'll have an option to choose a path and you can select the sequence or a still. Once you select it, it will be shown in your viewport. 
You can adjust interpolation steps and an offset. It doesn't work like a normal sequence. It corresponds to the object you have selected. If I select frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four, and so forth and so on. If you want to preview your sequence without relying on the current object, you can always disable the driver. You can add multiple references as well. Okay, let's talk about tight collections. Now, if you're working on a complex animation with multiple objects, you can always tie the collections. And here's how it works. You can click on tie collections right down under collection input. Once you click that, you will see available collections. Here I have a cube collection that is also animated. I'm going to click on it and click OK. Once that's done, if I switch an object in one collection, the other one will move as well. Well, this is it. The most basic overview of Stop Motion Advanced Toolkit. A more in-depth tutorial will come out soon, but until then, if you have any questions, you can DM me on Instagram or on Blender Market. Thanks for being here, and I really hope you enjoy the add-on. Thank you.